Hello and welcome to this week's video. My name is Dr. John Heyer from Holistic Health and Chiropractic of Frankfurt. In this video series, we're talking about what's the difference. We've done a few videos before and we're following up with that. And this week, I want to start on talking about what is the difference between the traditional model of health compared to the newer healthy model of health. But before we get into that, we kind of have to go back to the basics and understand a little bit more about our human body and frame. This is an equilateral triangle. It was popularized by Dr. George Goodhart, who developed applied kinesiology, which is a holistic technique in chiropractic. And you'll see in the triangle, the body, the, on the bottom of the triangle, we have body structure. On one side, we have body nutrition or body chemistry. And on the third side, we have body energy or emotions or the, the mental aspect of the human being. And when all three of those sides of the triangle are in balance, the person's health is in balance, and we refer to that as a triad of health. Now, imagine with me, if you will, if we take one line and stretch it out of balance, like maybe the chemical side, the nutritional side, the metabolic side, and we stretch that out, those other two sides aren't going to be of equal length. So there's going to be an imbalance in that person's health. Same thing with the body structure. If we stretch that out, elongate that, the other two sides are going to be affected, and then, of course, the same thing with the energetic side. So as a holistic chiropractor, I'm addressing body structure through chiropractic, the body energy systems through acupuncture or lasers, things, techniques like that, and then addressing the, the chemical or the nutritional side through things like diet, um, detoxification, nutraceuticals, supplements, and things like that. And that's really important to understand for this next point to make sense. You may have heard doctors calling themselves alternative or holistic, and you kind of have to look at their pedigree. Where did they come from? There's a lot of medical doctors who are calling themselves alternative or holistic, but really you have to ask, what are they doing differently? Are they doing anything differently than they did five or 10 years ago? Are they doing the same blood tests? Are they doing the same drugs, the pharmaceuticals? Are they doing the same shots? Are they doing the same procedures and they've just called themselves a different name because alternative is popular now. If they're not doing anything different, then they're really not different than the old model. Now, one thing you may start to hear or maybe have heard is functional practitioners, and I'll get into more of that in just a second, but I consider myself more of a holistic practitioner because I'm addressing all three sides of the triangle. And that's not to say if a doctor isn't, that they're bad. It's just that they may not necessarily be as holistic as their marketing and their branding is suggesting. And the reason I bring that up is because I have seen clinics and doctors referring themselves as well groups or wellness doctors or um, different names just to, because of the buzzword and people are attracted to that. But when you actually look at how they practice, it's not really holistic at all. Now, let's compare the traditional model to the healthy model. And there's three bullet points I wanna go over in today's video. The first one is crisis. Crisis care, crisis intervention. Please make no mistake, I think here in the United States, we have one of the best crisis intervention or emergency systems in the world. Maybe Israel's as good, maybe Israel might be a little bit better, but as a whole, here in the United States, we have an amazing, basic life-saving and advanced life-saving life -saving systems and procedures. If I'm having a heart attack or if somebody gets in a car accident, we definitely have the system to help that person to the best of known science ability. Here's the problem, here's the shortfall. Not every one of us is living minute to minute in a life-threatening situation. You know, not every one of us is living in a heart attack every moment of the day or dealing with a car accident. In fact, <clears throat> the big issues that affect our society are really chronic long-term health issues <coughs> Excuse me, that the traditional model does not do well at. It's great for life-saving, but when we're dealing about quality of life and long-term health issues and chronic inflammation and chronic degenerative issues, the crisis model doesn't work so well. However, the health model is really geared towards preventing those in the first place, or at least minimizing and we know enough about science and diet and health that there's a lot a person can do to help prevent health issues down the road. We may not be able to avoid all health issues, 
but we know enough information what path we can get a person on. The second bullet point is that the traditional model is very reactive. It's like waiting for a problem, waiting for an issue to break down. It's kind of like firefighters, they, they wait for a fire from a house and then they go out to the fire and then they try to put the fire up. But you know what, they're really smart because they actually try to educate us in our society on what we can do to be more proactive as well as preventative, right? They want us to have fire extinguishers in our kitchen. They want us to have smoke detectors. There are things that we can do around the house to be proactive and be proactively preventing fires. Certainly, they're the best people to call if your house is on fire, but they're actually teaching us what we can do to be proactive. And that's how I see myself as a functional or holistic doctor, helping people understand how they can be proactive so their house doesn't catch on fire, so to speak. The third bullet point is population. Now, the traditional model, a lot of people don't realize that when they go and have a blood test taken or a CBC or whatever, the laboratories take that data from all of the people in a region. I'm in Frankfurt. We're in Frankfurt, New Lenox, Mokina. We're in the southwest suburbs. And what happens is the labs take all of that data from the pool of population and they set their parameters. What's within the normal range? What's outside of the normal range? Now, if you have a healthy population, those numbers and parameters are going to be really tight. But if you have an unhealthy population, those numbers are going to be different. So let's say George goes and gets a blood test and George's blood work comes back within normal. Well, if as a whole, if the society has an unhealthy population, George's numbers might be normal or within the normal limits, but it's of an unhealthy population. Whereas in a healthier population, George's numbers might be outside of the normal range, and that could be helping to understand or explain why George isn't feeling so good. So even though this is based on the overall population, when we look at the healthy model, we want to be a little bit more precise. So for example, as a functional practitioner, when a patient comes to me after seeing their primary or their endocrinologist or the rheumatologist, and they come to me and they give me their blood work and they say, hey doc, my, my primary or my GP or whoever says my numbers are all normal, but I don't feel well. Well, I have to take their word for it because they're not just gonna come to my office for no reason. I mean, healthy people don't just come here because they got nothing else better to do. Their blood tests might be within normal, again, of an unhealthy population, but there's obviously something going on, otherwise they wouldn't be in my office help, asking for help. Does that make sense? So when I look at those same blood tests, my parameters are tighter and a little bit more precise. And I'll give you an example. Vitamin D, very, very common deficiency in our culture. Obviously we're up north, we don't get a lot of sun throughout the whole year. If you look at the standard lab range, it's between 30 and 100. So if your numbers fall anywhere between 30 and 100, they consider you clinically normal. But optimally, we have to be a little bit more precise. Ideally, the optimal range is actually between 70 to 90. 70 to 90. So let's say your numbers come in at 35. Technically, you're within 30 to 100. But how far is 35 from 70 to 90? It's way outside of the range. Does that make sense? So if we're basing our numbers on an unhealthy population, somebody could be considered normal, but not really healthy. But when we take that same person and be more precise and look at a tighter parameter, we can see, oh, here's why George isn't feeling well. His vitamin D is only 35 and it should be 70 to 90. We need to supplement with vitamin D. I hope that makes sense. The real goal, the underlying purpose of more of the health model or more of a holistic or functional approach is that our goal is to restore health by correcting the underlying causes. This system is chasing symptoms. It's medicating based on symptoms and signs. This system, we're looking to the underlying causes of those symptoms and trying to correct whatever imbalances that person might be experiencing. I hope that makes sense. And if it doesn't, feel free to type a question in the comment section and I'll check for that and answer it the best I can. And even if you don't have a question, just say hi to us so we know where you're coming from. And if you like today's message, 
give us a thumbs up. And if you think a friend or family member could benefit from this information, please share it with them. That would help us out a lot. Thanks. We'll see you in the next video.